Hello, and welcome to part two of my presentation on insulin pumps. So for this part of the presentation, what I'd really like to do is compare and contrast continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion with an insulin pump, or CSII for short, with multiple daily injections, MDI for short, using multiple daily injections. So the first comparison I want to make is with a normal pancreas. So a normal pancreas is uh, secreting a steady supply of insulin into the bloodstream using monomers, as I discussed in my pathophysiology lectures, throughout the day. And if you compare this with MDI and SCAI, you'll find that MDI is quite a bit different from that. So with multiple daily injections, you would be uh, giving yourself uh, insulin for, with a pen and it form a depot underneath your skin. And that depot would slowly uh, dissolve and then the insulin would get into circulation where it takes effect. Uh, compared that with an insulin pump, where it's slowly infusing, infusing insulin also subcutaneously, but it doesn't really make a big depot there. It uh, is slowly, the pump is slowly secreting, ins infusing insulin in, and it's getting picked up by the bloodstream. So an insulin pump is closer to the pattern of secretion to a normal pancreas. So now I want to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of an insulin pump. And so there's many. And so uh, the first advantage is that it mimics normal pancreas secretion better, and that can lead to less insulin being used. And I'll discuss this more in part three of my video on insulin pump calculations. Um, another benefit of insulin pumps is you can have very precise basal insulin. So with this meter here, uh, just even with this older model, you can program it to secrete, to infuse 0.025 units per hour. You know, that's a very precise and small amount. And that's virtually impossible to do with an insulin pen. Like the closest thing would be if you somehow found a pen that can give uh, 0.025 unit increments and you got the patient to inject himself every hour to simulate the uh, insulin pump infusing 0.025 units per hour. Um, I think you're gonna have a very difficult time trying to find a patient who is willing to do that every hour of the day, even when they're sleeping, to get that same amount of infusion. So that's an advantage of insulin pumps. You can have this very fine, precise uh, basal insulin. And you can also do other things with it too. Uh, you can also stop the infusion on the fly. Say a friend uh, calls me out to play hockey all of a sudden. Well, I could just tell I could just tell the pump to suspend pumping, and then I wouldn't have to worry too much about having lows during my hockey game. Whereas if I had injected a large large dose of basal insulin of Levimir or Tugeo or Traceba earlier on, well, I can't squeeze the insulin back out. I would probably have to eat a whole bunch of carbs to make sure I don't go low, and additional carbs could lead to weight gain. Um, let me see here. You can also set uh, different rates of injection of infusion as well. So for example, during the day, you could set a higher uh, infusion rate. Then during the night, if you're worried about those, you can set a lower infusion rate. Uh, that's again, something you can't do with multiple daily injections with an insulin pen. You can actually even program a very uh, precise uh, schedules with the insulin pump. So for example, say I know I work out from seven to 8 a.m. every day, I can actually program the pump to just automatically stop uh, giving me insulin between seven and eight every single day. So I don't even have to think about it, it'll automatically do it. So those are some advantages uh, with the pump because it has very flexible basal, very pre precise and flexible basal infusion. Another advantage is flexible bolus infusion. So these pumps usually have a bolus calculator built in that can help patients figure out how much insulin to take. Um, 
you can even do what's called a square wave bolus, where it can give a bolus, but over a longer period of time. So what are the situations where you use that? So say, for example, I'm eating a very high fat meal or a very, very low glycemic index meal. If I give myself a big bolus of insulin, uh, maybe I'll go low before I, I digest all that food and, uh, and, then, I would, and then the insulin starts working before I can digest and then I have a low. With a square wave bolus, you can actually give that bolus over minutes to hours if necessary. So, th so that it can match the peak of the slow down food and so that matches, that will keep, keep, get the blood sugars under better control. Uh, another benefit is less injections. So with multiple, oops, oops please, with multiple daily, uh, multiple daily MBI injections, we're giving multiple injections per day. Whereas with that infusion set that I showed you earlier, you only have to change that about once every three days. Some, some people have to uh, change it more. The reason behind it is because you get scar tissue building up on the inside, and then that can plug, that, uh, plug the infusion set, and then uh, that, that, that's a bad situation. You can, also, you can also get infections if you leave it in for too long, which is, which is always not good. And so another advantage is that studies have showed it has less hypoglycemia and better control, especially if you pair it with a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM for short. And so what's really cool out there, there's some monitors where you can uh, hook it up to a CGM, and then the CGM will actually communicate with the pump to tell it, oh, hey, this person's going low, and it'll automatically shut off the pump by itself depending on the parameters that you program into it. So that's really cool. It's like a, it's kind of like a step to an artificial pancreas. And so while there's lots of advantages with insulin pumps, there are some disadvantages as well. So one of the probably biggest ones is the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis. So remember in that previous video, I told you that the reservoir is only filled with rapid acting insulin. So as you should know from appendix six of the guidelines, Rapid acting insulin only lasts about five hours. So in five hours, you could have no insulin activity at all and be headed towards diabetic ketoacidosis. And this can be more common than you think. Say I'm driving from Calgary to Vancouver or Calgary to Toronto, you know, because it's so expensive to fly within Canada. Uh, each of those trips would probably have me driving for eight hours at a time. Say at the beginning of my trip, my battery fails, or maybe I get a kink in the infusion set and that blocks insulin from uh, infusing it into my body. That could mean that during the car ride, I, would be in I could be in full-blown diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a very bad situation to be in. So that's why it's suggested to have um, a backup insulin pump, insulin pen, an insulin backup insulin pen available just in case there's some sort of uh, problem with the insulin pump. Okay, another disadvantage is that compared to pens, it's quite complicated to use. As you saw in the previous menu with that menu of options, there's a lot of uh, options to choose from. Whereas with a pen, you just dial it up and give you your dose. And so it can, it can be complicated to use and take a lot more time to learn how to use uh, properly and how to use all the functions properly as well. And lastly, it can be expensive. This pump here, when it first came out, was about $5,000, which is not cheap. Uh, as well, all the supplies, like the infusion set and the reservoirs, all that can be hundreds of dollars per month. So that can add up really quickly and add to, add to the cost. Whereas with an insulin pen, it's just a one-time investment in the in insulin pen. So, uh, that is, that's everything that I wanted to talk about for this part of the video. And in the next part of the video, I'll be talking briefly on insulin calculations. See you then.